plants user facilities. We're going to talk about the uh, scientific infrastructure support for uh, CINR. So this is essentially the same uh, FOA that we've seen for the last few years with a few minor modifications to hopefully help uh, write better proposals and to clarify the, uh, 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 the work that we're going to do. So we've gone through all of these. This is a consolidated FOA. So it is both research reactor infrastructure as well as general scientific infrastructure in one FOA. Uh, applications will be done the same as last year through the grants.gov website, uh, although NSUF will be doing the actual administration. We hope to release the FOA this week. Applications will be due uh, based on that at the end of October on the 27th, and we anticipate making awards next summer, June or July. As I mentioned, we have two areas in this FOA. Uh, both traditional areas with a little bit of uh, uh, fine-tuning this year. University reactor infrastructure, we expect that the pot will be about $3 million again, with the average awards going up to about a million and a half. Um, the period of performance for these reviews is intended to be a year, although if you need more time, you can have multiple years. We would rather have you apply uh, stating that you need two years to accomplish the project rather than one year and then ask for extensions. Uh, that won't be held against you. Only the research reactors that are fueled through the DOE program are available. That list is in the front of the FOA. So some of the changes or clarifications this year, they're essentially the same criteria. Uh, the number one being safety, security, control, operational reliability of the research reactors. And then once all of those are filled, so once we've sort of kept all the research reactors uh, in good shape, then capabilities that can significantly improve or expand research, instruction, training capabilities, so on, will be considered. So you're certainly welcome to apply uh, for item two, but just be aware that your uh, proposal won't be given a high priority until all of the other ones are taken care of. Now, this really isn't a change from previous years. It's just a clarification. The second thing we're asking for, because this is really one of the very, very few FOAs that you can ask for a million and a half dollars with a very short proposal. Uh, we're asking for a more comprehensive scope of work and plan of execution. So if you're asking for um, a large project, we'd actually like to see really up to several pages uh, with the same page limit uh, for the scope of work. If you're asking for something that's very straightforward, like you're asking to buy a piece of equipment, the vendor will deliver it, you'll plug it in, it'll be online, then you don't really need very much of a scope of work. While there's no separate score for this, these will be evaluated under the execution area. So the review criteria, they're really the same as before. Uh, the only real difference is last year we had a, the capability to have up to five bonus points for NSUF integration. We're still interested in NSUF integration, but that's actually removed from this section. So the three areas as before, impact, utilization, and execution, the names have been changed slightly, but they're all the same set of criteria and they'll all be judged the same way. Uh, do please, once again, put some effort into the execution phase. One of the challenges is you might have a really great proposal, but if the reviewers don't believe you can accomplish it, you probably won't get very good scores. So that part of the proposal is also quite important. Uh, general scientific infrastructure, like I said, it's pretty much the same as before. We anticipate having about $2 million to award under that. In this case, period of performance is set at one year, perhaps in, in really exceptional cases you could go beyond that and you can certainly go you can certainly request a no-cost extension if for some reason the project takes longer than you thought it would. Uh, difference here, there is a university cost match required for any award above $250,000, and that's outlined in the FOA as well. We did want to uh, sort of clarify some specific areas of interest for this year. Uh, we're looking for non-light water reactor thermal hydraulics facilities, either light water reactor or non-light water reactor thermal hydraulics instrumentation development, particularly advanced instrumentation like 3D imaging. And we're interested in mechanical testing of irradiated structural materials. Uh, now, it's not to say you, you can apply for anything you'd like to, but these are specific areas of interest that will be given uh, higher, uh, a higher priority than anything else. Also, if you're looking to do mechanical testing or characterization, something like that, we're also very interested in working with irradiated materials. So a program that would look at irradiated, say, irradiated system stress corrosion cracking would be ranked higher than one that would look at stress corrosion cracking on non-irradiated materials. That's just something that is much easier to set up and really probably doesn't need the help of Office of Nuclear Energy to help fund it. 
We do have uh, an exclusion this year. This is, once again, not really a change in policy, just a clarification. Since NSUF and Office of Nuclear Energy fund high-performance computing uh, through the Idaho National Laboratory, the Falcon and Fission machines, and the upcoming new machine, uh, to the tune of several million dollars a year, we are not seeking any proposals asking for computational equipment or high-performance computing equipment. You can get access to these machines for free, either at nsuf.inl.gov or hpcweb.inl.gov. A uh, short application there will get you uh, as much uh, access as you should need to these machines. Review criteria for GSI are the same as they were before. Uh, impact utilization and execution. Once again, the execution, uh, the statement of work in that should be commensurate with the, uh, the complexity of your project. I mentioned the cost. Uh, there's no cost share involved, but there is a cost match. Um, that's the same as it has been in previous years. We still encourage NSUF integration, although we're not getting a separate score for it. Uh, the appropriate uh, NSUF integration uh, statements should be uh, will be reviewed in the impact and utilization sections rather than in a separate section this year. Contact information is the same for this year for me uh, at, at INL. We do have a new contract specialist on this at the Idaho Operations Office of DOE, and uh, her contact information is both here and then available in the FOA as well. So that's all I have on this. There are some extra slides that will be posted online that talk about the uh, nuclear energy infrastructure database that you can use to uh, assess the capabilities you're asking for. So I'll wait then if you have any questions. Please use the question box on your GoToMeeting application to type in any questions you have for the NSUF staff. We'll wait a few minutes to see if there are any questions. Brendan, where is a list of the names of the user facilities? So those are available at nsuf.inl.gov, uh, and then the whole database is available here at nsuf.infrastructure.inl.gov or through NSUF website, uh, at the infrastructure tab. And if you have any questions on that, once again, you can just contact me and we'll get you set up on the website. Okay, those are all the questions we have, Brendan. So we will uh, pick back up with the NSUF overview next uh, at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. Oh, there's one more question. So before we, we finish up, uh, would the INL uh, HPC facility provide capabilities of running Monte Carlo Neutronics codes such as MCNP? Yes. And how would we get access to it? So you can get access to it. Uh, if you're doing uh, an NSUF experiment, a rapid turnaround experiment, you can get those at, sorry, I'm missing my slide. There we go, at nsuf.inl.gov. And once again, you can contact me for information on how to do that. Or if you're doing anything, obviously, nuclear energy related, so it doesn't have to be an NSUF project, but it does have to be relevant to the Office of Nuclear Energy, you can go directly to HPC Web uh, and just apply for a user account. That actually might be, well, you can do either one, and you can certainly contact me for, uh, for help with that.